Welcome back everybody, this is the Johnny Mare, and I am finally continuing with Final Fantasy 2. So last time we unfortunately lost our first party member when Joseph sacrificed himself to save the rest of the party from a massive boulder. And that was in the Ice Cavern, located to the north of our current location, which is Salamand. And in this particular episode, what we're going to be doing is trying to kind of make sure that Joseph's sacrifice wasn't in vain by heading down to the airship uh, for Sid and using that airship to get over to Kashawan Keep to get the Eggle Torch and get the Sunfire in order to destroy the Empire's Dreadnought. So in between episodes, I did a little bit of grinding. I improved my magic with Firion and also with Maria. I uh, got them up to around levels four and five, and I also sold off a bunch of extra equipment and items I got from the Ice Cavern. And in this particular episode, we're gonna start by heading into Salamand and talking to the residents who, for some reason, have already heard that Joseph has sacrificed himself. Word seems to travel fast when tragedy occurs. Uh, not exactly sure who told them. It wasn't me, I didn't talk to any of them viewers, uh, but they're all aware of what happened. And it is, it is a very sad day. This was kind of the first opportunity in the Final Fantasy series where a character sacrificed himself for the greater good. Now that has kind of become cliche in many of these games later in the series to almost a comical level in some of the later games. Um, but this was the first time that happened. Uh, and as I mentioned last time, we're not going to be seeing Joseph again during the main storyline. Uh, and we're going to talk to Joseph's daughter Nellie here, who is being cared for now by this woman that apparently knew Joseph. Uh, and she's decided to step in and essentially, I would assume, adopt Nellie and treat her like a daughter. But uh, Joseph is not coming back in the main storyline. Now, the redone versions of this game have added extra content uh, once the game is over. So post-game dungeons, uh, and we might see some of the characters uh, that we no longer have in our party throughout the game uh, as characters kind of come and go uh, during this kind of post-game content. But for now, Joseph is gone. So we're going to head down to... I believe it is Poft, which is where Sid and his airship are located. Uh, you can walk to Kashuan Keep if you want to, but uh, I have no desire to do that. Uh, Castro and Keep is very long, uh, and it, it is very uh, grindy, and so you kind of want to conserve as much MP as possible uh, so that you are able to get through the whole thing in one go. Now, you certainly can leave at any time and uh, come out because there is a mode of transportation just to the south of the Keep, and I'll be showing you that in a little bit once we get over there. But first, we're going to hire the airship from Sid's underling here to head over to Kashuan. Now the airship is not something I've done so far, but you can use it to access pretty much most of the major locations in the game. Uh, so we're going to use it to go to the keep. And uh, we might actually get another party member there. We shall see. So let's head outside. Go up to the airship and click on it. And we get an automatic ride all the way over to the keep. Now, I kind of alluded to the fact that there is some transportation to the south of the keep here. So as you are going through the keep, if you need to exit, you can come down here to the Chocobo Forest. And you can use the Chocobo to head back to town, rest, heal, get new items, and then use the airship to get back over here. And uh, the Chocobos work pretty much like most of the other games. Uh, they allow you to travel without worrying about enemy encounters with a nice little uh, version of the Chocobo theme music. Uh, and this is actually, I believe, the first time that Chocobos appeared in the series. So that's kind of cool. But this is ultimately what we want. We want the Sunfire. We need to use this in some way to destroy the Dreadnought. And unfortunately, 
we do not have the means in order to get it yet. So we need to find the Eggle Torch. Or Eagle Torch, or however you want to pronounce it. So we're going to use the bell here to open up the door, and that'll give us access to the keep. Now the keep isn't necessarily that massive. Hey, it's Gordon. Yeah, it's our new party member. We lost one, but now we get another one. So Gordon wants to find the torch in order to access the Sunfire as well. But again, he's still very cowardly, <laughs> so he doesn't want to do this by himself. So being the heroes that we are, we're going to take him on and allow him to join our party. And I like this little uh, back and forth here between Maria and Gordon. You can show us around. And Gordon's like, no, there's some mysterious maze slash secrets to this place. So actually, I don't know it at all. How convenient. Otherwise, it'd be nice if he kind of told us where to go, right? So that we didn't end up in dead ends and stuff like that. Now, fortunately, I basically know where I'm going. So I'll show you, for the most part, the uh, quickest way through the castle without having to worry about dead ends or... Uh, trap rooms because again there are many trap rooms in this dungeon So Gordon comes fairly decently equipped although I have better stuff for him So I'm gonna outfit him with uh, mithril stuff We're gonna give him the spear also the shield and then the cuirass as well And uh, we're gonna get rid of his bronze gloves to increase his evasion so Gordon is also a spear wielder, and uh, he is not really someone... I mean, you can customize him like any of your characters, however you want. Uh, we're just going to let him use the spear and have him be a physical attacker. So the route we want to go is to the left, but uh, there is an item to the south here, and that is a Cure Tome. So we'll pick that up. We're not going to use it yet because, well, our characters have gotten everything that they need at this point. So uh, we'll save that for a little bit of a later situation. The door up there to the north was a trap room. So we're going to dodge that. And we're going to head upstairs. Now most of the doors in this place, again, are trap rooms. So we're not going to go in them. All right, and we have a new enemy type here. So now that we're on the second floor, we're actually going to start experiencing new enemies that we haven't seen before. So for the first time in quite a while, I'm going to get to show off uh, some new enemy characters and show some random encounters, which I got a little bit of uh, some comments about that in some previous episodes, people wanting to see more random encounters. So for those of you that enjoy seeing those, this is your opportunity. You're going to get to see some new enemies and watch me basically basic attack through these guys. So just regular attack them. Now there are some exceptions, there are some fairly powerful enemies in here, including, and I'm hoping, I have my fingers crossed, that we're not going to encounter an Adamantois. Yes, the boss from the Ice Cavern is now a regular enemy in this particular dungeon. So hopefully we won't actually encounter one. They're, they're not a super common encounter, so I have faith that maybe we can avoid them. But as you noticed, uh, the enemies do like to use a couple status ailments. So they use poison. Um, these shadows also can blind your party members. So all you have to do is use Asunia after battle if any of them do get hit with an ailment. Uh, and that should take care of basically any problems that you encounter. So we're just going to use our magic here to take them all out. They're not too difficult. And we'll get some level ups here, so to speak. Now most of the status ailments are ones that will persist after battle. Uh, so you do want to just wait until the battle is over. Unless basically your whole party gets afflicted with like blind, then you probably want to use Asunia in battle to make sure that you're not... Oh lord. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Adamantois. I was hoping we wouldn't encounter you, but I guess we're not lucky enough. So you'll notice, again, too powerful for our regular attacks. So we're going to have to use Blizzard for Maria to take it out. 
and hopefully not die. So I'm gonna heal, and then we'll blast him again, and two should be enough. Hopefully it won't last beyond this. There we go. I'm really hoping that's not a regular occurrence. I don't want to face a ton of those. Not so much that I'm worried about dying, really, but it's more that it takes up a lot of MP because you have to hit him twice with uh, magic to basically kill him. All right, so we have a new item and we had an encounter with some were rats, but our new item is the golden shield. So it is resistant to poison, so that's nice. And it is more powerful than our Mithril Shield. So I will be sticking that on Firion because he is our healer and therefore the most important to keep kind of in tip-top shape. And we will move on. So now we're going to head to the north. Continue this ridiculous encounter rate and try to get through these enemies as quickly as possible All right, so now we're actually gonna get a couple rooms behind doors that there are items in So the first is this room right here There are three weapons in here. We have a mithril axe a mithril sword and a specialty mace called the werebuster so if you did not buy any of that previously, well, shame on you. Um, but we're going to equip the Werebuster on Maria because it's actually a very powerful weapon. You'll notice it almost doubles her attack power. And again, it's also very effective against specialty beasts. Oh man, we have an Ogre Mage. Which is always weird, right? Not just the purple air, but the fact that Ogres, which... You know, in most fantasy lore are very stupid, right? They don't have the highest intelligence. Oh, hey, and we got a blind tome. Uh, that some of them would become mages. That they would have the patience and motivation to actually learn magic. I'm not sure I buy that. But we are actually almost done. We only have this floor and then the boss encounter to go. So we have one more room with a couple extra items in. And that is this one. Again, all the other doors lead to a trap room, so you can just skip them. So we got some uh, ailment items that get rid of ailments for us. And then we also get some golden armor. And another monster in a box with some mines. So we're going to blast them with fire. A party-wide wide fire spell should be just about enough to take them out. And if it doesn't, well, hopefully a physical attack or two will be enough. And uh, you want to kill them quickly because their physical attacks, if you give them a chance, can be very powerful. So it looks like we're on good pace here. We'll kill them quickly. We'll gain a couple levels for Gordon because uh, he's a little behind the rest of us. And then we'll decide what to do with this golden armor. Now, as is the case with most of the quote-unquote heavy armor in the game, uh, it does increase your defense, but it does lower your evasion. So in general, I'm going to focus on light armor for the most part, so that I don't have to worry about that evasion being reduced. But uh, mainly, I'm going to do that with just my main three party members of Furion, Guy, and Maria. For Gordon's purposes, we can just give him the golden armor. It's not a huge deal. As is the case with most of the secondary characters in the first part of the game, you're not going to have them for super long time, so you can outfit them basically any way you want. But here we have the boss of the keep, and that is the Red Soul. Now we're going to equip the Ancient Sword, and I'll say why in a little bit. But we're going to heal up, we're going to save, and then we're going to take on the boss. All right, so let's do this. Well, you could have told us that before, Gordon. That'd have been nice to know. So why did I equip the Ancient Sword? Well, the Red Soul, as you'll find out after this first round of combat, well, one, it does very powerful magic, so be careful with that. But two, it has really, really high defense and it absorbs all magic. So you'd think, oh, it's a red soul. It must be weak to ice, but no, it absorbs it. 
and our attacks do nothing. So the Ancient Sword is a sword that has a very low accuracy, as you'll notice, but it does have a chance to, when it hits, cause the curse status. And the curse status, what it does is dramatically lower an enemy's defense. So we're gonna physical attack. The Red Soul has about 550 hit points. We're gonna try to last as long as possible and hopefully as we continue to attack with Guy, he will eventually curse this thing so that we can uh, start doing some real damage to it. Otherwise, Maria is pretty much gonna be our only damage dealer. The uh, Werebuster actually is able to overcome its defense. So you'll notice she's doing about 40-ish hit points with a regular attack and about 90-ish with a critical. So she'll be doing damage every turn. I'll heal as needed and then hopefully eventually Guy will be able to curse this thing. Now if you're playing the original NES slash Famicom version, this thing is almost impossible to kill without getting it cursed. So you want to make sure you do have that ancient sword and you keep attacking with it to cause the curse status because its defense is very, very ridiculous in the original version. At least we're doing a little bit of chip damage here. Hey, we cursed it. Now we should be able to finish it off pretty quickly. There we go. So Red Soul defeated. And we do get some levels. That's always appreciated. And to the victor goes the spoils. And for us, that is the Eagle Torch or Eggle Torch. So now we're going to teleport out of here. We have to re-enter the keep, use the Eggle Torch on the Sunfire, and then allow us to capture it. Remember, when you use Teleport, it does cause HP damage to the caster. So as you're going in, you still can encounter enemies, so make sure that you heal Furion, or else you might find that he gets killed very quickly, or whoever has Teleport. So we will go into our item menu here, we will find the torch, uh, wherever it is. <laughs> I guess it filled a, another slot in our inventory. There it is. And now we have the means to destroy the Dreadnought. Of course, we don't know how to do that, but we supposedly have the means to do it. So we're going to head outside, we're going to save, and we're going to head back and see if we can figure out a way to find the Dreadnought. But first, we're going to see a little cutscene here, as unfortunately the Dreadnought is after Sid. Go, Sid! Remember when he was scoffing about the Dreadnought earlier? He was like, that big bucket of bolts. Well, apparently, it's pretty quick, because it's able to catch him pretty fast. We got a little Final Fantasy VI style crane pincher here. But yeah, they just captured Sid in the airship. That's not good. So we're going to grab a chocobo, we're going to head back to Altair, and I will meet you there in the next episode. Thanks for watching, viewers, and I'll see you all next time. So long!